In today's class, we're going to consider how you solve trig equations, that's trigonometric equations, without the use of a calculator. So trig always gets split down the middle, calculator, non-calculator. Generally, non-calculator is more difficult because obviously you can't just fire it into a calculator. So in general though, the overview is not much different between the two different modes. It's just really when you get to a certain point in your calculation, instead of turning to the calculator, you've got to turn to some manual method. So this class kind of assumes that you've already learned how to solve trig equations like these guys uh, using a calculator. If not, then that's cool. This is not going to be, um, it's not very different to that. So it would be okay to check out this class first and then maybe check out that class and compare the techniques. But the key with this really is that we've got to use what is called trig exact values. And the exact values means using effectively these two sort of special triangles to generate the values that we would otherwise get from the calculator. It also means that because we're kind of restricted to using these triangles, then we're always going to see the numbers 1, 2, root 3 or root 2 in the equations. So if you see an equation that says 2 sine x minus 5 or some other number, that can't be a non-calculator question. That can only be done with the use of a calculator. Um, so it's a slightly different technique. So that's the first kind of check. You should, by the time you've worked a few of these questions, just recognize, hey, it's a root two and a one, that means it's gonna be non-calculator. It's a root three and a two, oh yeah, I'm gonna probably use that triangle, which I've forgotten again and need to remember again. So the first thing is just to quickly check these triangles. We're gonna use them. You don't need to use them in the sense that if you know their values off the top of your head, you don't need to draw them every time. But what they basically tell us is, so if we wanted to work out, say, the sine of uh, 45 degrees, then using Sokotoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'll just maybe put that in, O over H. If this is our reference angle here, this is O and this is H. So that's one over root two. So the sine of 45 is one over root two. You could just learn the sine, cos, and tan of all the values, and ideally that's a great thing to do, but you probably still need to know the triangles as well. So similarly, like down here, if you wanted to know the tan of 60 degrees, well, that becomes our reference angle here. This would then be opposite, this would be adjacent. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so that would become root three over one, which is just basically root three. Okay, so that's how we use the, the triangles. We're gonna need those. We're just gonna park them there and we'll use them again over here. So let's take a look at the first equation. So two sine x minus one equals zero. Let's actually just make an assumption that for all of these, we're going to have a range of values of x going from zero up to 360 degrees. That's kind of your standard range of values for restricting the solutions. Otherwise you just get infinitely many solutions for these trig equations. So we're going to start by rearranging the algebra. This would be true even if this was a calculator question. So sine x equals minus one becomes a plus one and then divide them by two. So yeah, at this point, if this was calculator, we would just use the inverse and write sine to the minus one of one half. And then we would get some value from the calculator. We're going to have to figure out what that calculator value would be uh, manually. So what we do is we think, okay, right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse in Sokotoa. We turn to the triangle that's got the one and the two in it, which is this triangle, and we say, right, if we want the one to be opposite, switch to my red pen, if we want the one to be opposite and the two to be hypotenuse, then that would mean that 30 is the angle we're interested in. So that process then tells us that the, um, x value is going to be 30 degrees for our first solution. If you've done some trig equations already, you'll know about the use of the cast diagram. So we need a little cast diagram just to check that that is indeed in the right, correct quadrant. So sine equals a positive value. So we will be checking here and here, that's zero to 90. So 30 degrees is in there, so that is a valid solution. If you're not sure about the cast diagram, if you've never seen that before, then try to follow along. It's probably going to be a little confusing for you, but you can check out another class, which is just about the cast diagram, um, and that will help you know help you figure this all out. 
Second solution is in the S quadrant. So we're going to get that by doing 180, then going backwards, so minus 30, to give us our second solution of 150 degrees. So the process is very similar to what you would do if it was a calculator question. It's really just this line here, getting from here to here, that is the, the non-calculator part. And at that part, we just turn to the triangles. Okay, so not easy. There's quite a lot going on. You will need to practice a few of these if you've never seen them before. So same with this guy here. We're just going to rearrange the algebra. So we're going to get cos x equals minus 1 over root 2. Bit more complicated if there's a negative, so I would recommend that for this one we start by doing our class diagram just to get orientated when there's a negative, it's more important. So C A S T cosine negative. So we need to check these two, in other words, the two quadrants where cosine is not positive. If it was positive, we would check here and here. That tells us the solutions have to be in these two ranges of uh, values. Okay, so we can see the one in the root 2, that means we'll be using this triangle. So we want the angle where cosine is equal to 1 over root 2. We're just ignoring the negative, by the way, because obviously you can't have negative side lengths on a triangle, but we just ignore the negative for now. Just dealing with 1 over root 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. In the case of this triangle, because it's symmetrical, unlike this one, it doesn't matter which angle you choose, they're both 45, so that tells us that the, the um, solution there would be 45. 45, though, is in this first quadrant. So what that tells us is that it's not a final solution. What we've just really figured out there is that if you did inverse cosine of 1 over root 2, as you would do on a, on a calculator, it's still okay to write this without having to use the calculator, but we're basically figuring out there that that would be 45 degrees. But in this case, that's not a final solution, that's just like a reference angle, I guess you would, you would call it. But we just need to make an adjustment now from 180 to get the solutions. So 180 minus 45 to go that way, and 180 plus 45, uh, because it's going counterclockwise to, to go that way into the T quadrant. And that's going to give us two solutions of x equals 135 degrees and x equals 225 degrees. So slightly more complicated. Trig equations are always more complicated when there's a negative. You've got one or two extra lines either of working or at least one or two extra things to consider as you go through that technique. Okay, cool. Right, let's move on to the last one. So starting off in the same way again, rearranging the algebra. So cos x equals root 3 over 2. Firing up our cast diagram again. By the end of this, you'll have done like 10 million cast diagrams. So cos x equals positive value. So we're checking here and here. So this is going to be a little easier to deal with. Root 3 and 2 appear in this triangle. Let me just take off these and start over. So we want cosine to be root 3 over 2. Remember, cosine is um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So we want root 3 to be the adjacent. This needs to be our adjacent angle. Hypotenuse is always hypotenuse, so that one stays the same. The angle which has this side adjacent to it is this angle here, 30. So that tells us that 30 satisfies that equation. So therefore, in other words, um, well, let me just write it here. So the cosine inverse of root 3 over 2 is 30 degrees. Checking our cast diagram, 30 degrees is where one of our checks have been put. So in other words, the one in the A quadrant, 0 to 90. So that tells us that 30 degrees will be a valid solution for x. So x equals 30 degrees is the, the first solution to that equation. Second one we get by reference to the second checked quadrant, which is the one between 270 and 360 degrees. So we get that by doing x equals 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. So a lot of students ask why we never take our adjustments off of um, 270 and 90. So these are like the adjustments here, this final kind of little manoeuvres that we do, where was it, <laughs> up here. Um, you can do, you can take them off of those, but it involves at least an extra line of work in, it introduces more chance of making a mistake, basically. So try and just learn to take them off of 180 and 360. 
Okay, so just a quick recap then, that is how you solve trig equations when you're using a manual method, basically this exact value method. The overall approach is not different really, much different to if you were using a calculator, it's really just that one step, like getting from there to there, getting from there to there. Instead of turning to your calculator at that point, you're going to turn to your two favourite triangles, you're going to try your best to remember them because they're not easy to remember all the time. If you can remember them, then we're going to use those to get the values instead of using the calculator. So quite a lot going on here, quite technical, definitely worth spending time um, practicing this technique, so check out a few practice questions.